mile in fog patches and showers early Friday, but improving to greater than six miles on Friday morning. Stars shining bright above. Hello and welcome, my name is Philippe Sohai, I'm Head of Design at Kraken Yachts and uh, some of you may know me from the technical articles uh, that I did at Ocean Sailor and uh, now I'd like to welcome you to the next edition of Birth of Blue Water. Uh, we hope with this new uh, format, being a video format, we can really uh, bring you along for the journey and show you every single detail from the very start to the very finish of the boat. Hello, I'd also like to welcome you to this new series. My name is Tristan Grace, the creative director here at Kraken Yachts. Well, we have a busy schedule ahead of us as we continue to build new orders of the very successful Kraken 50, and we are starting to build the first Kraken 58. Throughout the series, we hope to take you into the shipyard and various members of the Kraken team will show you the many steps involved in building the best blue water yachts in the world. So, sit back and join us here on our first episode, where Philip will be showing you a selection of fibre mats which are used during the construction of our yachts. We are looking at some cloths and some mats that we use in the production of the Krakens. So I've got a selection lined up here, this is probably the most uh, common materials we use uh, in lamination. There's, I think, like eight different ones that are also in our use, but these are the main ones. So, let's have a look. Uh, principally, we use three different types of uh, fabric. We use a biaxial, double bias and CSM. Let me explain. Biaxial is a cloth with, which is basically stitched of two layers. One is vertical uh, fibers or 90 degree fibers. The other one is zero degree fibers or a horizontal layer. It's, a, it's called a not 90 type of fabric, uh, biaxial or biaxis. And we use three different weights. Principally, we use 1200, 800 and 400. So here on the table, we've got a, this is the thick one, this is the 1200. And you can tell it's a, it's a, it's a pretty heavy fabric. If I go and bend it like this, it, uh, it doesn't fall flat. It, it retains a bit of its shape. And if you were to touch it, it's, uh, it's quite heavy. And when Tristan does the close up, you'll be able to see one side is running one way and then you flip, the other side is running that way. And you can just see the, the pattern of the stitching bringing them all together. That's a knot 90. Next to it, we got the same cloth, the same fabric, but just lighter. So you can see this is a much softer material, uh, much easier to work with as well, but less strong. This, the, the fake stuff we use where we really need the strength, this is for finer elements. Principle is the same, fibers running one way, flip it, fibers running the other way. Now, the way these fabrics are made is basically a massive weaving machine in the, in the factory and they align the fibers one way and the other and you can see just about the little tiny stitch pattern, they literally just stitch them together. All right, so these are the uh, biaxials and now we are moving on to the double bias. Now the double bias is again the same principle, you got two layers of fabric, like on the other one, but the fabric uh, or the fiber orientation is different. Here you got uh, minus 45 and you got plus 45, so they create a cross pattern. And you can see when you do a close up running like that and you flip and they run the other direction. And much like the other one, just the two layers are stitched together with, uh, with tiny thread. Now in terms of how we use them uh, is the plus or minus 45 uh, is very good at collecting load from the whole area. So if you got just a big side panel uh, in the hole and you're just expecting a load to come in from the waves or just from the pressure, you're going to be using a fair amount of this. And um, anywhere else where the load cannot be specifically uh, pinpointed to a certain location. Now, 090, uh, the double bias, uh, is slightly different in the sense that because the fiber orientation is so specific, it uh, will be best at transferring the load in the direction of the fiber. So if you got, for example, let's say the mast area, where you got the chain plates on the sides, you got the mast base in the middle, you got a frame running uh, across, and then you got some stringers going along like this. 
and we're gonna use this cloth a lot. We're gonna, and we're gonna rely on the transverse fibers of the cloth to really bring the chain plates and the mast base and the frame together and provide a good bed for it. While we're gonna rely on the longitudinals to really tie with the rest of the boat. We're gonna have some plus minus 45 in there of course as well, but this is the main one of, the, of that area. And now the final fabric that we see a lot in the boat is this. This is the CSM, this is the chop strand mat. And literally as the name suggests, you can see here is just a lot of small fibers chopped. The fibers are about this long uh, and they are just uh, chopped and the machine feeds them onto a big plate and the adhesive is applied, rolled out and that's it. There is no engineering with this in terms of each fiber can go any direction it wants. So you cannot really lay it in a certain area to provide strength in a certain area. We use this a lot for skin coats. Well, actually skin coats is built purely of that. And we, so we use this for skin coats. We use this where we just need to build up thickness. We use this for some simple uh, padding layers. Now where uh, CSM is also very important is in hand layup when we do pads for um, mechanical or for machinery mounts, uh, we need to in create a plywood base and laminate it the side of the hull or the bulkhead. And when you hand lay, you want that CSM because CSM really retains the resin. So it's easy to wet out and retain the resin in its place. So what we'll do is we'll use combination mats. For example, uh, we'll use a double bias with a combi backing. And that really allows us to work with it easily. Especially because when we work with vinyl ester, the vinyl ester is not really that good at working only with uh, engineered fabrics if it's hand laid. So you have to provide that CSM uh, backing to really help it uh, bond properly. These were a selection of basic fibers which are used during the construction of the hull, deck and structure. It's worth mentioning that in specific areas we use other fibers. For example, the first layers which are laid on the hull are a very fine 30 gram chop strand mat which is mainly used for print through protection, ensuring the smoothest possible gel coat finish of the exterior of the yacht. In other areas we use various aramids. As an example, on the leading edge of the keel and the lower section of the bow and crash zone, we use a Kevlar for additional abrasion protection. In the skeg, we use layers of carbon to achieve additional stiffness. Overall, there's quite a lot of materials and combinations which are used during the build. There are up to 22 layers of fiber in our laminate matrix, which contributes to Kraken's strong structural stability, especially when you compare it to other yachts on the market today. And this more than prepares our yachts to take on the rigors of ocean sailing. However, just the fibers on their own are not enough to create the structure required, so it's also extremely important how we use them and where we use them. This is a topic of structure and the design we utilize, which we will cover in a future episode.